you enjoy whatever it is that we give you for those few years or few months and when you die you become a zombie and that's why i tell people it's not easy to sell your soul at no point were you like no i'm stopping i'm checking out no even if i have to leave for two weeks or two months after that pastor Wait. freddy <laughs> where did you get the money as a spirit as a dark spirit, as a zombie being sent to cause accidents, being sent to do this, being sent to do that. There's one thing about I've been through the most. <laughs> it will trend. Backed by popular, popular demand. demand. Not only did he have a part one, part two, but he's on the podcast as well because you guys absolutely love, love him. Pastor Freddy. Thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Yo, yeah, you had uh, our audiences talking. Um, uh, they love your story. They love how you're narrating it. They love your experience. So many people can relate. Mm -hmm. But also for me, I think it's the openness and the willingness to share your journey. I, I, I think um, it does sound like a movie, but <laughs> it was your <laughs> life story. You yeah. had to go through that yeah. movie. So you were in a real life yeah. film. He's um, just staring in the yeah. movie, basically. <laughs> how has it been since you've been on the show? Uh, crazy. <laughs> um. Your audience is amazing. Thank you. They are reaching out to me and I'm glad that I'm able to, I don't know, that I was able to touch lives without me lifting a finger through mm. your platform. I love that. It's, it's the storytelling for me. I know off air we spoke about, um, you know, you writing many books and, mm. you know, just that being an art of its own. But I think it's also the art of how you tell your stories and how you narrate it, exactly. you know. How was it for you to just come out in the public and tell people what you went through without having to feel like people are going to judge me people are going to think that you know i'm just doing this to trend you know just just that you know that fear of will they believe me why am i doing this how am i going to benefit from telling my story i've been writing long before i came on uh, i've been through the most um since i came out of it mm. whatever i went through the Lord told me to share my story because it will mm. save one or two people who listen. So I didn't care who listens. I didn't care who judges. It's for the purpose of helping the many. Um, you have no idea how touchy it is that somebody says, when I stumbled upon your video, I was searching for rituals to sell my soul. And mm. I watched your video and I stopped immediately. And then they'll SMS me or they'll email me and we'll start talking. I do a lot of counseling to people that have been um, your, your, your subscribers. Mm. Um, you have no idea how touchy it is mm. when someone says, I was bored going through YouTube and thinking of killing myself Then I saw your story. Mm. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah, so... The one that chooses to judge is actually denying himself the opportunity to be moved. Probably he has a story to tell. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's angry. That's why he's bitter. That's why he's judging. But I could care less about what they think. You care yeah. about the impact. And the impact is definitely there. It's so evident. Yeah. yeah. I think, Pastor Freddy, you know, what made you popular is that you shared a story about how you are part of a cult. Yes. And uh, I think maybe briefly just take us back. Um, to some of the highlights and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll dwell deeper into that. Okay, um, it always starts with, a f let me say, the frame of mind, the state of emotion that leads a person to that decision to join a cult. Um, I was an angry man. I was a broken man. I was disappointed. Um, in a sense, I valued myself in the, uh, through the eyes of the Reserve Bank. What makes me the person that I am should be the, the amount of money I have in the bank. I mean, remember before all that happened, I was young, a young spender and money came easily. I went to prison, did five years. I came out trying tried to redeem my reputation and failed miserably. And it's not easy coming out of prison. Um, with all that, I tried to walk the straight and narrow. It wasn't happening. I, going back to crime was not an option. But then at the same time, it was painful with the way 
society was pointing fingers mm. and I was determined to maintain that same reputation that I was known by. Mm. Yeah, the flashy guy, the big spender, the young man who buys the bar and all those things. So, hey, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. So, and yeah, at, at a certain point, I sat down and I said, hey, you know what? To hell with everybody, what they think. Mm. I'm the one who can't feed my family. I'm the one who can't pay my rent. I'm the one who walks mm. taking his son to school on my shoulders. I'm the one that old friends are driving past and hooting in their mercs. And then they'll talk about it. So why don't I just join them? Join the devil. <laughs> How yeah. did you know? How did you know that, it, that there was a cult that exists or there was, you know, an organization that you can join, join. for you to make money i know you spoke about how you met a certain pastor and, and they <laughs> told you about that and but just just tell us about it because mm. because for me it's like you it's almost like a coincidence you are at this place of desperation and then all of a sudden here's this person with a solution and you hear something like no actually i want that the devil sets us up in very 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 funny ways um about knowing about the secret organizations, I knew about them for a long time. Um, I've been a person since childhood who's had this curiosity of the spirit. I grew up on horror movies. I, I can tell when a horror movie is written by somebody who's just imagining things and when a horror movie is written by somebody that's been in there. Hey, boy. Yeah. So I, I knew about these organizations. I knew you can't find them. The ones that advertise are not real. Mm. It's by invitation. And coincidentally, he was not a pastor. He practices some Eastern oh, okay. uh, yeah, myths or whatever you call it, uh, spiritual practices. It was a, I don't know how I, should to, to, how I should put it, but it was no coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. Um, coming from the crime, criminal world, Mm. I grew up or I live by a motto there is no such thing as coincidence if you see the same car twice mm. in a space of time you should know that that's not a coincidence so me meeting that person when I'm in s I'm busy searching and I'm searching and I'm searching for a real cult to join and this person comes and shakes my hand and feels my energy and he reads my life right there and he tells me he knows someone who can help me because what I need is something deeper and something higher. Yo. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that. And you knew that this is exactly what I need. Look, in a stupid way, um, he was going to make work easy for me because before I met him, I tried summoning the devil. I don't know how many times. Ooh. And he put me on silence, on mute. He never... <laughs> He probably just blue ticked me. He never responded. And that's why I tell people it's not easy to sell your soul. Because so the devil blue ticked you? The devil. <laughs> join the cult. Hey, I'm ready. <laughs> devil playing hard to get. He is. Your? As easy as you think. Look, we deal with demons on a day to day basis in our lives. We are attacked by demons. We are attacked. Devil plays high. So we, we think you just call him and he appears uh, like a genie in a bottle. And it doesn't happen like that. But anyway, after miserably trying and failing and Googling all the rituals and the symbols and whatever, this guy came to my rescue, I thought, so I thought. Yeah. So after the blue ticking, then what happened? What was the next step for you? Um, and were you still like patiently waiting that something can come up? You said you, you, you don't believe in coincidence. So, of course, missing, meeting that person, like what else happened that brought you closer to what you, you have been longing for and desiring to, to get into, into that cult? Um, tenacity, resilience used in a negative space. I'm not a person who gives up. And when I put my mind to something, I go for it no matter how many times I burn until I get the results. So I continued searching, but like I said, um, this man made my work a lot easier. 
he connected me with somebody a grandmaster who's having a cult but then i realized um, along the way that different cults do practice in different ways they're not all just summon the devil and he comes and all those things and mind you um coming to that i was flat broke Mm -hmm. And when I was connected with a real deal, I was told I need to raise 75,000. Which is what all the comments are about. Pastor Wait. Freddy, <laughs> where did you get the money? You said you were broke. But you made ways and means to raise the money. How? And if you can raise 75,000 rands, why do you need the cult? If you could raise it that quick now, um, I, I, to join the cult, surely you are able to raise money yourself. There's, there's something we need to understand, and I responded to some of your viewers' comments. Um, mm. People would ask me, 75,000, you can start a business. Mm. There, there's, there, there's one thing you know, that you understand, like I'm saying, when the devil sets you up, he puts you in a space where everything you touch, instead of turning to gold, no matter how talented you are, it turns to ashes. Mm -hmm. So if I was to take that 75000 and start a business, it was going to fall within a week, unexplainably so. I had many businesses behind me before that. Mm -hmm. See, so raising the 75000 and the funny thing is, when you need that money for that nonsense, it comes it up. Comes. <laughs> it comes running. That time you've been broke for I've a been long trying time. I to borrow 5,000, 1,000 rand to pay my rent. It didn't happen when I tried to borrow 25,000 for that. It comes. Get into mm. this scheme and get into this scheme and make 50,000 out of it. So I had to hook and crook to raise that money. So I think guys. as much as you wanted to be part of the cult they also wanted you in there although they're putting you through tests mm. but for the fact that all those things became possible they were also desperate to win you over the test part you will be put through tests yeah because some people go there out of curiosity and they're not taken in they have to check how serious you are but then the other thing is the devil always wants to take the people away from the light Mm. especially if you are gifted you are talented you've got something going on he will pull you so he will make sure that the means are there for you to cross over to the other side and mm. he will stir things up so that your people push you away like mm. i always say a lion hunts in a certain way there's a reason the scripture in first uh, peter 5 verse 8 says your enemy is like a roaring lion like Co yeah because mm. a lion stirs up the herd of zebras or buffaloes and they run in one direction but there's always that one that one, runs two. alone mm. and that's the one the lion goes for so yeah. the devil sets you up to isolation mm. you start finding you're fighting with your family nobody wants to deal with you the church is turning its back on you and just everything is pointing you to him mm. that's a sermon <laughs> yeah, but but I think, Sissy, I mean, the reason I say that, because you can see, like, Pastor Fred is a, is a fighter. He goes after what he wants, you know, and, and for me, it's like this, it's, it's, it's the potential and the gift upon your life. Yeah. I feel also, Sissy, that, 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 you know, that they saw as mm. well, because I feel like they won't, they won't go after somebody who doesn't have a gift, you know. They could see the potential that this man has. The greatness. The greatness that he has. Mm. And, and, and for me, when I listen to your story, at some point I'm listening, I'm like, okay, at this point he's going to give up. Yeah. And then he doesn't give up. <laughs> and like, there's the graveyard for me that was so scary. And I'm like, Pastor Freddy, like you have no fear in you. <laughs> you are a true child of God because he has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but, but of love but, and a sound mind. Yeah. And I was like, you had no fear. Who does that? You did it. I know, yeah. but the level of desperation for me, I think it's what me and you can't comprehend because you get to a point, this is why he explains the background of saying mm. that you, when you just hit that low, mm -hmm. nothing else matters. But mm -hmm. Millie's right. At no point were you like, no, I'm stopping. I'm checking out. No. Not even when the chicken only ate five grains. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Freddy, you were uh, like, five years is too little for me to enjoy the wealth. The whole idea was that even if I have to leave for two weeks or two months after that, as long as I leave an inheritance for my kids, and which is another fallacy that people are lied to when you join in that, because 
when you die is gone because you're the one who signs the contract. Mm. So all the wealth just disappears. Yeah, that's why I, like I keep saying you see people who were rich, they had nightclubs, they had supermarkets and they die and their fingers are pointed to the family to say the wife squandered, the children squandered. It's not mm. them. If the children want their wealth, if I want them to to remain with the money, then they must sign their own pact. Sure. Mm. Cuz it's my soul that I'm selling, mm. which is also I don't know who's swindling who, whether it's me or the devil cuz one um this uh, according to Ezekiel 24 18 verse 24 24 verse 18 God says all souls are mine. Mm. So you can't sell something that's not yours. It's not yours. And then the devil is sells for selling you something that's not real. It can't be real if you can't invest it, if you can't save it, if you can't leave it for like your you kids. You can't even hide the money anyway. It's not <laughs> real. You, you, look, you are told to blow it. Because it's going to end at some point. Blow it. Are for you able things. Yeah. Are you sure. able to identify people who are in cults and uh, you know who who in in this day and age make a lot of money but you can see this this is not real. This is a person who who sold their lives. Are you able to see them? Yes. Whoa, scary. Hectic. Yeah. And sad. And sad, really it is for me it's sad because then you know immediately that it's short lived. Yeah. And that's the scariest part of it of it all. Mm. Once you sell mm. your soul, your days are numbered. Let's talk about that. About your days being numbered. Help us understand how that works. Why do you have a limited time to live and why do you have to die? Why is there a sacrifice of life and blood and the body? Two scriptures come to mind, John 10:10. 10, 10. The devil came to steal, kill, kill and destroy. destroy. And then uh Proverbs 10 verse 22, the blessings of the Lord bring wealth and add, mm-hmm. he adds no sorrow to it. Um nothing good comes from the devil. It's not in his nature to be good. Period. Even if he tried, mm. he can't. His own smile hurts him when he smiles at you. Mm. Cuz it's not his nature. That's why in a short space of time he shows his true colors. Now, these people we are a generation that believes that um you have to belong to a cult to succeed. So when you see somebody actually honestly making it if the way you guys are then you'll say oh they sold their soul probably in other words saying look there's nothing god can yes. do to prosper his children yes. but then the lord says in Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 i have given you the power to produce wealth mm. Mm. see so we run in that direction to live for the moment not caring about the afterlife um not caring about the legacy we leave behind um like i said i told um uh, when i wanted to throw myself off a building not far from here and preach at near the high court the lord asked me is this how you want to be remembered but mm-hmm. now even these people that are selling their souls joining these funny cults the instructions that come with it are painful are sad they are depressing mm. some are married they are not allowed to touch their wives some mm. uh, are not allowed to ever marry some are not allowed to have children and they live that lonely life with all that money and instruction mm. to some is that do not spend it on your family waste you. it so you can't help a relative you can't help the needy it goes against everything that god teaches us so blow it in nightclubs drive around buy cars like cause more damage actually yeah attitude of let me have it all i don't care what happens afterwards is the big trap that we are living in right now mm. where we say to hell with it all i'm going to live now even if it's just for 2 years and then i don't care what happens but now to come back to your question is why the death after sh- such a short space of time mm. I can kill you without killing you. Mm. You. I separate you from the sp- spiritual world. If I'm your grandmaster and you did the in- whatever ritual through me, mm. meaning that you are recruited to me spiritually. 
you enjoy whatever it is that we give you for those few years or few months and when you die you become a zombie like a tokoloshi or whatever you're the one now that we're sending around to do whatever havoc we need to do so you're actually not dead now you become a servant to the devil exactly. because i remember you spoke about at first it seems like they're working for you they're mm. giving you whatever you mm. want to command mm. a maserati it comes you command mm. a billion mm. it comes and then the tables turn mm -hmm. and you're like then it, the real deal starts because yeah. now they're demanding stuff and you can't say no. Yes. So even if they're demanding the soul of your own child, mm. even if they're demanding like your the, own the, soul, your own soul, it's like now you can't say no because they've been running around for you. It's like the contract has turned now. Yeah. And that's the dangerous part that people don't want to hear about. Look, this is a crazy contract. There's no fine print at all. At least the insurance contract they say at read least, the fine print. Yeah. This one has no fine print. Terries and C's apply. And it's not at your favor. It's not in your favor. Nah, and people don't get to even see or ask, hey, what am I getting myself into? So when you okay, you I need to understand this. So you spoke about you can you can kill someone while they're still alive, right? Mm. And but where do where okay, where they then they become the tokoloshi like you explained but when do you actually die like the natural there's death still like the real death is to come that's yes. planned by okay, god okay, way okay you are dead now in the flesh mm. remember there are two deaths but you are still alive in the in spirit the spiritual, in the spirit realm um psalms 90 verse 10 um the lord has appointed to a man 90 there are 70 years to live anything after that is a bonus so if i was given by God to live up to the age of 65 and I sell my soul at the age of 40. Mm. God's time is appointed time. I, I can serve for the remaining 25 years as a spirit, as a dark spirit, as a zombie being sent to cause accidents, being sent to do this, being sent to do that. And it's, it's not a walk in the park because there's nothing nice in that camp. Even as a dead person, as a spirit roaming around, you are not having fun. You are being commanded. It's to torture. To do all this rubbish. Mm. Okay. And you can't come out of it. No. Once you are in that I, deep and you've been killed, you can't come out of it. You only have a chance to come out of it when you are alive. Once you're gone, you're gone. So after serving them, you're going to hell. That's it. It's, it's down with you. One way ticket. That, and if that you die in a cult as yeah. well, there's no turning back. So, yeah. Because yeah. with Pastor Freddy, right? That's why I was telling you, Pastor Freddy has a gift upon his life. And God favors you. I think that's obvious. Mm. Pastor Freddy was 5'2". Five 5'2". Two. Five two. Mm. Getting into the real deal. <laughs> God was like, yeah. actually, not have a this one. Mm. You know, after everything you've done, you are right at the end to qualify. You are trying to burn all these things. Guys, by the way, just go and check out the episode. We're not going to get into all the details. There's two parts of it. So right at the end, you are supposed to burn these things in the graveyard. Mm. For hours you try, the sun even came out. And they were and, and they were frustrated because they were like, this doesn't happen. Mm. It should happen this way. And you did everything right. You know but what? But God refused with you. Hey? What, what, <laughs> what I like to think about that morning is that if the community, the surrounding community had seen me. <laughs> they were going to beat you to death. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, I would have made real headlines. <laughs> yeah, no, front page, everything. Like <laughs> yeah, but... Um, Yo. Like, like we always say, you know, Christians speak things without understanding, but when God says no, it's no. He said no. Mm. And when he says yes, it's yes. And when he chooses you, he chooses you. I'll never you. forget the prayer I said when I was in prison and during my early months in prison. Because I know myself. I mean, I've been, I'm a risk taker. I'm reckless. I can be reckless. I said, okay, um, it was the time that I'm saying, okay, fine, a lot of people find religion in prison, so I'm going to read the Quran and the Bible. I want to catch God in his own lie. So I was <laughs> reading the two books. Yeah, to compare. And then for some reason, the Quran became, no, no offense to the Muslims, to the Islam religion, but it started, it, 
it's, it didn't do it for me. Um, I was going to say it became cold for me, but I continued with the Bible. And along the way, I had my spiritual encounter, the road to Damascus encounter while I was in prison. Um, but after that, I said a simple prayer, and, and God loves simple prayers. I said, Lord, protect me, mm. even for myself, because I can Yo. make reckless decisions. Wow. And that prayer was answered so many years later yes. with a calm. You didn't even know what you were what you praying. And God was like, at this point, I'm protecting him against himself because at this present <laughs> moment, <laughs> but he asked yeah. and he answered. Yeah. I love the faithfulness of God. Yeah. Seven he keeps, weeks later. He keeps his promises and his mm. promises are yes and amen. Mm. And indeed, he did protect you. Yeah. And I think also it's important for me to also highlight the truth that's in the word of God. That the, the, the word of God comes with so much revelation, comes mm. with so much guidance from the spirit. Um, I think as we wrap it up, as you close, you've written seven incredible books. I want yes. you to take us through that. What is the journey? Why? Uh, wh what makes them all different? What are the different stories that you wrote? And also, you reading the Bible in those days of you being in prison, mm. what that mm. did to your walk in faith today, as we wrap it up. Um, starting with the Bible, um, reading the Bible became not just knowing it. It's the word coming alive in my life. I needed that. In, my, in, in, the, in the sphere that I was going to walk in, I felt the word of God come to life. I felt the Lord speak to me through the scriptures and later on beyond the scriptures. Um, with the books, um, the seven books, okay, the one is basically a children's novel that um, touches on bullying, domestic violence, and also nice spirituality. Yes. It's called The Magic Mask. Um, it's a story about a child you know, who also went to the mountain to have an encounter, one-on-one -on -one encounter with the Lord. Um, the other books, Swindled by Satan, I wrote it, I think, six years ago. It's about this. Very experienced. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got uh, life of life was unfair to me too, but I chose to write my own happy ending. As you said, I never gave up. Mm -hmm. It was blow after blow after blow, but I continued and decided it's not up to the people to decide how it ends for me. Mm. Yeah. Rewrite your own narrative. Exactly. And then um, I've got the one also about land daughter. It's basically on the male space of things that you know we. It's, I'm encouraging guys to really do introspection as to why are we so angry. I wrote the book, Reaching Out to Other Men, as I searched myself as to how I became this angry person to the point that I raised my hand at my ex. Mm. I would explode, you see. So the other one is School, The Devil's New Playground, that is mainly targeted at parents, teachers, church leaders, community leaders, that we should look out for certain signs Be away. for the kids. Sure. Who's teaching our kids when they go to school? Come on. Who's raising our kids? Because mm. we just hand them over to the schools to raise them. Yo. Yeah. So. And to the internet. Mm. And we're like, here's the yeah. Wi-Fi pin. <laughs> Be busy. Yeah. I'm coming. I'm going mm. to the mall. Mm. I yeah. think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to you and your seven incredible books. Thanks. And yeah. uh, I'm so grateful to God for using you, uh, not just as a pioneer, I think in the kingdom of God, but really as a light. Yes. I can see yeah. the word is not just something that you speak, but it's something that you live. And you have experienced God as much as you've experienced mm -hmm. the devil, but you've experienced God too. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful, uh, honestly, from a sentence yeah. production to have you and have you share your story and have you changed and transformed lives. I think it's just the beginning to where God is taking you. I think there's a bigger purpose behind everything that you do. You should know it already. So may you continue to spread the light of Christ and may God continue to elevate you even from a, on a global uh, platform, bigger yeah. and bigger heights. Uh, and to many more books as well. Pastor Fred, you loves reading and <laughs> writing. Yeah. He's incredible. He was just actually mentioning to say that it's so easy for him to read books and to tell whether a person is a reader or not. So that just tells you, you know, like intellectually, he's just on another level. With that said, we're definitely going to give away 
a few books so let us know which book specifically you want and why you want it mm-hmm. and we're going to make sure that you receive that book because more than anything I've been through the most is about power and impact and mm-hmm. I believe that your voice is your power yes. and what people hear and what they do with the information that's the impact mm-hmm. so thank you so much for sharing your story we appreciate you and cannot wait to see what what God has in plan for you next Thank you, ha- thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> From myself, Innocent. And myself, Millicent. It's, it's bye for now. now.